Hi, uh, my name is Art Bergeron and welcome to this installment of Bergeron Briefs. If you haven't seen this show before, uh, I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. There are 60 of us at Myrick O'Connell. There are six, or 40 in Worcester and 20 of us in Westboro. I do nothing but elder law. Um, I do these programs to supplement the presentations that I do actually at the Council on Aging here uh, and other communities to talk about elder law issues. But what you really need to know about as a senior is the players that provide the kinds of things that you may need so that you'll have some kind of a face to you know, combine with whatever your issue is. One of the players you need to know is Carol DiRienzo. Carol, uh, Hi, who has, has, she and her husband have a unique business with a unique service. Um, she has been to several Council on Aging presentations and, and now, as background, as you know, I often talk about my friends Frank and Mary uh, and their desire to, that their goal in life is to stay at home until they die and be buried in the backyard. Now, if that's the case, but your health deteriorates, um, the question is, how do you keep staying home while staying safe? And that's where Carol comes in. So, Carol, Hi, how are you? I am well, thank you. Nice you? to see you again. Thank and you. so, tell us or tell me again. So, what do you what what do you do, and why do you do it, and how did you end up doing what you're doing? How's that? Okay, that's a lot. Um, what we do is we go in and help people stay in their homes as safely as possible. And the first thing we always do is come in and take an assessment. And the, and you and you are you and your husband. Right. Right. I am and, an and, RN. And you before you did started doing this stuff. Or, and still now, yep. you're, you're an RN. I am an RN. Mm -hmm. I am a nurse. Uh, I'm called the Nurse Carpenter yes. um, because I own the construction company for which we work around to, right. to enable people to stay in their homes. And your husband, whom I have met, yep. is real handy. He is Is one of those handy. guys who can kind of do all of this stuff. He right? is the production manager of the company. So That's yes. great. He, and he has been in the business for more years than I care to mention. <laughs> so you've been doing construction, or he's been doing construction for a long time. Uh -huh. But, not, but, but talk about kind of how you get interested in this particular well, in piece of what you do. 2003, I wound up having back surgery. Yeah. And I came home from surgery with a list of things I couldn't do, and most of it revolved around manipulating my own home. And being married to a contractor makes life a little bit more easy for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we started to realize that was... I couldn't have been the only person in this situation that was having a hard time. Because you started looking at your own house. Right. Saying, and, and realizing that your house was in the way of your being kind of happy. Right? Well, of living. Or living. The obstacles that were in my home at the time were significant enough that yeah. it forced us to do some things at the time. Um, I then, since I was no longer able to work in the nursing field after that surgery, yeah. I started to work in John's company. Yeah. Um, doing the, I, I was the uh, liaison between the medical world and the construction world. He was doing a lot of medical build-outs at the time. I see. And we started having uh, conversations with clients that were referred to us by the doctors. And I began to realize that many of contractors are, are wonderful people, but they didn't have the medical knowledge behind to help somebody who has especially a chronic illness. Right. Because um, contractors are great at building stuff, right. but not necessarily great at knowing what needs to be built. Exactly. In a kind exactly. of a medical context. Exactly. Yeah. Especially with somebody who may have ALS or MS, where what you see today may be vastly different than what you'll see in a couple of years. And so a contractor will come in and build for today, and the concept of universal design is becoming more apparent, but designing for tomorrow was not something that was really done at the time. Right. And so we decided to start this business with a nurse running it because a nurse has that medical knowledge and also has the ability to talk to a client pretty honestly, yeah. and it comes better from a nurse yeah. than, than from a contractor. And you can kind of see it, and you yeah. can kind of... As you say, and, and I've come to appreciate this by dealing with you, by dealing with a lot of nurses, mm -hmm. right? That you're just looking at it from a different perspective because exactly. you're looking at space from the perspective of not necessarily what you could do, although even because of your back, it's maybe what you can't do, but right. what you could do, but what people could do in, in a whole dip, set of different medical situations. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. So that's a huge. That's a huge piece. It is. It is a very big piece, and. Um, and going forward in helping people to do that, we bring together both our medical background and our construction background. Yeah. So we're able to help the client in a little different way. 
and um, in a special way. So I want to. Yeah. I asked you to come on because, as you know, I'm interested in all those issues. But my typical clients either are worried about Alzheimer's, or they have Alzheimer's, or they know someone's got Alzheimer's, or some other disease that causes dementia. Dementia. Right? right. And I know a lot of people just confuse Alzheimer's with dementia itself. Correct. Just because about 70% of the people who have dementia have it because they have Alzheimer's, right? But, there's a, but, the, but the broader question is, if you have that level of confusion, right, um, and, you, and all of those diseases that, that were just taught, all mm -hmm. of the major causes of d dementia are progressive, so things don't right. get better, right? Right. Exactly. Then the, so the question, and, every, and all of my clients, every one of them wants to stay home, never want to leave, certainly don't want to go to a nursing home, right. don't really even want to go to assisted living. They figure, oh, I can't afford it, and it's not home. It is right? very true. Home and is I, very special. And I tell them, there's, at some point, you may need to do that for safety purposes or just because you want to talk to other people. Mm -hmm. But the point is, as long as you can, you want to stay at home. That's so, talk, so talk about home and how you can stay at home if you have dementia. And I know one of the miracles of talking to you was I always, you know, figured, like I'm sure most of us on the on outside world, right, that, that a, 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 ex making a house acceptable means putting in a ramp. And pretty much that's the end of the story, right? So talk about a home from the perspective of how you make it safe if a person is in a, has early stages of dementia but mm -hmm. is probably going to be pro progressing and so you want to make the house safe. Talk about well, one it. of the first things we look at. Um, oh, and, um, by the way, you've told me you're going to provide, you may be providing some slides yes. so folks may be seeing some slides of this stuff. I'll be happy to. Or not. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. We, so they may just get bored watching us or they may actually get to see slides. There okay. you go. So, now, so uh -huh. talk, talk to me about, about that house. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Well, the first thing we do is we go yeah. in and we see the house. Yeah. And we look at the obstacles just from a general point of view. Yeah. And then we have the clients come in and we see where they are now. Yeah. We know pretty much where they're going to be down the line, but we want to see what is their obstacles to living safely right now. right now. And one of the first things we always look at is the bathroom. That is the bigger, biggest number one remodel that I would say the um, for the bathroom for, for safety. Isn't that like the most likely place to fall? It is. It is. You, right. I mean, you talk about tile and water and, you know, confusion or um, the heat of the steam can make you become dizzy. So there's a number of issues around a bathroom. Yeah. And oftentimes it's in a confined space. So it's, you're thinking of the vanity, you can hit your head on the tub, the, the toilet. And there's it's all a number. hard, a it's lot all of hard surfaces. surfaces. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's the first thing that we start to look at. And um, we want to design that space as effectively as possible within the confines. Um, sometimes we do, we're able to remodel it in such a way that we can make it a little larger than what it is. Mm -hmm. We oftentimes take out the tub. That's one of our first things that we try to, to look tub. at doing is taking out the tub and doing some type of what they call zero clearance or roll-in shower where there's a little to no lip if possible. I see. Um, depending on the layout of the bathroom. That's, I see. that's our goal. That's our major goal. Because it, so it gives you more room but also it gets rid of that I got to step into step the tub. Into the I got to get out of the tub. Yeah. And yeah. the larger of the area enables a caregiver to be there with the person. So if oh, the see. person has I a see. wheelchair, yeah. somebody can help them roll into. If we're able to put a bench in the shower, some of the or get a get a either a, a fixed bench or a portable bench. So it's big enough and wide enough. We try to make it so that the person can get in. We always put in a handheld. So that a handheld a handheld shower unit. Um, so what a handheld is is it comes off the fixed bar, and yeah. they make those fixed bars as grab bars now in many cases. Oh, so that's oh, what oh. we put in the fixed bar where the shower usually the shower pops slide. Up. Well, you have a shower head for the person who may yeah. not need it, but you also have next to that a handheld unit. So that and it, we put it on a grab bar. I see. Um, there are people who want it not on a grab bar. We always try to recommend that it be on a grab bar because it's another form of safety in a shower. So you can be holding onto the grab bar, take off the handheld, shower yourself down, yep. or a caregiver can, t excuse me, take off the handheld and, and shower a person down. And I've heard you do these, pre <clears throat> do these presentations and you always say your favorite things are grab bars. Yes. My, but one my of the things you want to make sure is that you've got a grab bar that isn't going to come off when you exactly, grab it. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. That is my um, number one thing is to ha try to put a grab bar in every bathroom in America. 
um, because whether you're three or 103, you can always use it. Um, right. And you and, want to and, make sure and some of the ones you've I've seen that you've they're not they're, they become they're attractive. I guess that's stunning. the other thing. It's kind of like the ramp. Right. People have got a stereotype. Oh, this is so ugly. But but really, what the industry has really kind of moved it toward has. a lot of these features being uh, having. My daughter went to Rhode Island School of Design, so it's it's yes. producing a practical thing in the be in the most aesthetically pleasing way possible. Exactly. So they knew the practical stuff, but God, it was ugly. It and now truly was. <laughs> a lot of this stuff is getting a lot more aesthetically pleasing. It is. Yeah. Um, and no yeah. longer is it the institutional grab bar of yesteryear. Yeah. They are um, available in every fixture. Um, Color, color size, available. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sizes come. You can get them for your toilet paper holders. You can get them for your soap bars. I mean, so there is a vast, vast amount of product available now um, to make your 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 life in your bathroom much but safer. My hat. So speaking of the rest of the bathroom, so now you've got so shower, shower, you've got a sink, you you've got a toilet. Bars. So, so we, we put about... more than just the one grab bar in the shower. Yeah. We try to have one or two. So it coming in, egress and egg, and um, yeah. ingress and egress are always safe. Um, then you come around to the vanity. We try to put in a vanity so that if the person is in the future going to be um, in a seated position, whether it be a wheelchair or a scooter, they're able to use it. So we put in a floating um, sink, which is affixed to- A floating to, sink. Like a pedestal sink without the pedestal attached to it. Commercial bathrooms, think of a commercial bathroom. Most of those sinks, yeah. many of them are just hung on the wall. Oh, I see, I see, I see. We call them a floating So sink. you could actually kind of get under Roll that Roll underneath sink. it, um, or we build it within a vanity that may not have a bottom to it, or a false bottom that can be taken out in the future. Um, I see. And so we always want to make sure that the sink is accessible to somebody in a seated position, and oftentimes that the mirror also is tiltable so that the person sitting can, can see themselves in the mirror. And then moving on to the bath, to the toilet, we want to get them a higher rise toilet. They call it comfort rise, ADA rise. I mean, there's a number of different names for that terminology. Yeah. But in order to make sure that we put the right size in for the people in the home, yeah. we have a compromise. Because if we were putting one in my home, what you do is you measure from behind your knee, and you can't see this, but you measure from behind your knee down to your foot. And that's the length of above comfort height for you to sit at. But you're a little But person. I'm five feet and right. my husband's six. So we have a happy medium between you the members have, of the You don't have two different toilets. No. Well, we no, do no. that too. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you try in the family of a house where may only have one bathroom. Yeah, that's yeah, You yeah. try to make it amenable to the, all of the residents in the home yeah. um, as much as possible. So um, you put in a comfort height toilet and you also try to make sure that if there's not a grab bar, if, they, if they're resistant to a grab bar initially, that we have blocked for a grab bar in the future. Locked. So a lot of time- Locked. Blocked, well, I'll explain that in a second. So a lot of okay. times what you try to do is prepare the room for future use. So by blocking, if you're removing all of the walls in the bathroom in order yeah. to accomplish this remodel, yeah. you put in wood that is strong enough to be able to affix a grab bar behind into- the, Behind the behind walls. Behind the walls at the, at the height that you've determined is comfortable for your client in, in a number of different places. So we usually put one by the toilet. For the towel bars now, we're using grab bars because again, your grab bars are beautiful. So they I look see. like towel bars. I so see. they serve two and then purposes. That's a grab bar. And then so it's also a grab bar. So we've already, we put blocking in. So if the, con if the client is at the moment reluctant, it's there for when they need it because yep. it depends on the stage that they're in at the moment. Yeah, so you're thinking about today, but you're also thinking that's once again, right. if you've got a person with any kind of progressive, yes. progressive disease, you're looking about the future, right? Okay. And to be honest with you, all of our remodeling is remodeling today for tomorrow. So even if we have clients who are perfectly happy, young, healthy, and have kids, we try to remodel that space for an eventual. Right. Because we've had clients who have broken their leg. And right. she's called me up and she said, wow, I can't believe how great my house is now, even with my broken with leg. My broken I never leg. expected to be able to use the things you put in, right. but I appreciate that you did it. And so that's, that's really the goal of all of our remodeling. Is and, and I suppose you've got, you've got clients whose mother shows up. Exactly. Because it, they've got an issue. Because mm -hmm. that, is, that is increasingly kind of needing, yes. needing to happen. Not that mom ever wants to go to that house nope. and really wants to stay home or be in assisted living, but at some point the economics may drive needing to have somebody that's close. And it can go either way. The kids either yeah. move into mom's house or mom moves into the kid's house. So right. you want to 
mo remodel a home from what we call potty chair to wheelchair. To wheel <laughs> So that it, it's good for everybody yeah. in the house, but it's good for the client going forward especially. So we, so there's, there's the bathroom. So there's the bathroom. Let's go to the kitchen. Okay. Talk about the kitchen. The kitchen this, The kitchen had... Once again, I've seen these, this I've seen some slide. of your sides, yep. had mm -hmm. some of the most kind of like, wow, that's cool type things in it. So yes. talk about a kitchen. So basically in a kitchen, the same as in a bathroom, is you want to start with your flooring. You want to get yep. a floor that's not slippable. And there's a number of t different products out there that are available for that. Um, then you start looking at the appliances used in a kitchen and how mm -hmm. to make your kitchen functional from somebody who's both standing to somebody who's sitting. Yep. So one of the things you look at is the stove top. They make stove tops now that either you can put low and or can go up and down. So at the push of a button, it can start high for somebody who is a standing position right. and be lowered for somebody who's in a seated position. Wow. So I, now I suppose that that stove top therefore doesn't have an under, oven underneath. Right. It does otherwise not have an oven. No, it does but, not have an oven. But once again, that's kind of a, if you can move that function to someplace else. Exactly. Or make that function really be the microwave or something. And just think of the, because you, you never think of that. You no. think of a stove as always having those components. Fixed, of a fixed size. But, but if it's just the stove top, you can move it around. It can be yeah. moved around. Yeah. Um, moving on to the oven, they are now making, and I'm sure, and I talk about this in my, in my slide presentation, many of us, Thanksgiving, have the oven that folds forward. And here you are in front of your oven, and you're trying to get out this 20-some-odd pound turkey. And as a short person, I find it very difficult because I have to reach in past the oven door. Right. So right. more and more and more manufacturers, looking really from the European line, are making ovens similar to microwaves that are on a hinge side. So that when you open up that oven, it's not a pull down, it's a side. Oh, I see. So I that see. So you now you can get close. So now you're going to have to go over that Exactly. That pull you don't down have to thing. go over that door. I you're see. up yep. close and personal. And then we usually put design in underneath that oven. A, a rollout, for lack of a better word, okay. so that you can move that hot pot onto that rollout. I see. I see. And we also put it at a height level that if you are seated, you'll still be able to accomplish the cooking in your home. Moving on to the sink. Those, those are the three major appliances because right. the, the refrigerator and the dishwasher, there's a number of different uh, refrigerator drawers and doors that are out there that you can mm -hmm. assemble into a kitchen so that somebody in a seated position can, can access. Can use these. Um, but the sink the is the sink. other other yeah. piece. Because you so, can't, because the pipes aren't going to go up and down. Right? Believe it or not, they can. They do make sinks similar to stovetops that with the push of a button can move up and down. They go up and down. They can slide within a special pipe underneath. Yeah. But oftentimes what we do is we set the sink a little lower because that's an expensive item. Yeah. But what we yeah. can do is set the sink a little lower and put in false doors on the bottom that open up and slide in so that somebody in a chair or a scooter can wheel into their sink and access their sink so they're able like to with clean that their bathroom dishes. similar very so that, similar so to that, bathroom. Mm -hmm. right. same type of cabinetry same type of idea so that you can roll under to get to your sink and use your sink so those are the major things That's, in the kitchen those are pretty terrific those right. are all pretty yep. terrific okay. right we talk about somebody especially with dementia one of the things that you want to be very careful of is the um, access to places so mm -hmm. we always want to make sure that the front door, the back door, the side doors are not easily unlocked. You want to make sure medications are put away. You want to make sure anything that is a potential object of injury, knives are either in a locked cabinet or in a, in a, in a separate cabinet than usual. Right. So those are the right. the highlights. And I things. suppose you could you could you could kind of disguise some of those locks. So yes, they're not you can. Um, there's something called a compounding lock that that looks like a lock, but it actually isn't a lock. Um, there's a number of new product. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, all at the same moment that the drive of people having this disease has um, created a lot of new product out there to help people manage it. Right. So it's like a blessed and an unblessed right. event. <laughs> right. Well, because now there's enough market and exactly. there's enough people who are getting the fat. Well, there's enough people who won't even talk about it. Because, right. because as, as we've talked about, that one of the issues with Alzheimer's is that for many people, it's not a disease, it's an embarrassment. It's a stigma. And so nobody wanted to think about really adapting your house for someone with Alzheimer's because you don't want to even admit you got it. Exactly. Or that you're going that. And I, and I really feel that, that part's changing. It has. It's it has really, changed it's really starting tremendously. To change. When you see um, things about Alzheimer's in, in magazines, on your Sunday magazine, it's a whole expose about Alzheimer's and the things that they're doing to help 
try to, I mean, so you know that it's becoming a more commonplace it's discussion, more, more common. and it's a wonderful thing. Yes. So, so now, go, so go to a couple of the other rooms. Go to some like the live, kind of the living area or or bedrooms. I know there are a the few things that yeah. you've really talked in about. In the bedroom, you always want to make sure there's nothing cluttered in almost any space of your house because a person. You've talked about this in terms of co co colors and, and contrast. contrast and um, again, stairs. You want to make sure that the edge of the stairs has a contrasting color, like a, either a roll of tape, because somebody does. When you have Alzheimer's, you start to lose your depth perception. So those are, that's one of the things that we tell people if you don't want somebody going out a door is to put a dark rug in front of that door because the person with Alzheimer's will assume that that's a, a, a pond or a lake or, or a hole, basically. Right. And so therefore they right. won't cross that threshold. Um, same in the bedroom. But by the way, just going back to the locks thing, is that I think you may be also really appreciate the fact one of the great, the great fears, right? When, you've got, when you're working with someone who's got Alzheimer's, they're going to walk away. Yes. They're going to go down the street. Yes. Now what? Right? right, and 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 some of the answer to that can be just having you know locking mechanisms or coded locks or mm -hmm, things mm -hmm. that don't look like it's like a prison, but right. they just cause the door to not be openable. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, exactly. And, or, or or they cause you to know if it gets open. Can you just kind of talk about that? Sure. A little bit? There's a number of different products. Your sleigh, out there. the the sleigh issue. I seem to me the bell. The, the bells. The, oh, my sleigh bells. Yes. So we. I often tell people. Um, a very quick and inexpensive way to notify you that your door is being open is to hang, and always around Christmas you can find them, sleigh bells. Right. And you, if you hang them on the door, when that door gets opened, you'll hear it. That'll be a notification. Um, from the low tech or no tech to the high tech, there's a number of alarm systems that you can get that'll notify you on your cell phone if you happen to be out of the home that the front door has been breached um, or any door that has been breached. The glass doors, there are um, a number of different type of product out there that have automatic door openers, similar to your garage door opener. Oh, 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 oh. So that if you can hide that, then that door won't get open. Right. Um, we always tell people never to put your keys by the front door. Everybody comes in from their home and drops their keys by the front door. We tell them to put it in a drawer because a person who may have dementia may not understand that the key is going to go to the car and they're going to go outside and try to stop the car, they're going to get out the door, they're going to try to get the locks. So out of sight, out of mind yeah. is a very important thing yeah. with somebody who has dementia. Um, okay, I didn't mean to no, force you okay. to go to locks. <laughs> locks and doors. Locks and doors. So now I go mean, back and tell me about, tell me about bedrooms. bedrooms and living space. Okay. Oftentimes, okay. with a person with Alzheimer's, they get confused as to what drawer has what in it. So one of the things that we tell people is to label. Um, label where the underwear is. Label where the socks are. Right in the drawer, in the, in, Either, right in the bureau. Right the, on the front the, of the bureau, the, the, the drawer. In the uh, bedroom. Uh, yes, exactly. Because that way, it will help the person know where to find those things. Sometimes, even in the bathroom, we tell people um, to label the bathroom door, bathroom, so they know that's the door that they're supposed to go into. If there is a door that you do not want somebody with dementia to go into, we recommend that you paint it the same color as the hall color. Because, it, it, again, with depth perception, they won't realize that that's a door. That's a door. Um, one of the other things that we use in a bedroom is we want to make sure that it is cl clutter-free. Because, again, somebody with dementia has depth perception issues and also starts to lose their ability to really move their legs and function as far as walking Easily, so yeah. we tell you remove clutter, scatter rugs. Got to be the, one of the hardest things in the at so many of the homes that I go into of, of, of older folks, right? Because stuff is kind of accumulated. It so that the home that you're describing, in some ways, is the opposite of the home that all of these folks are living in right exactly. now. Exactly. So to exactly. actually make that because to take that stuff out, th that in itself is a statement that it you're is. making about the change in your life. So that it must is. be hard to do. It is must. very, very hard to do. And usually what we say is that we start small. We don't try to make rash things because it's very hard for somebody to accept that. So we start with small things. And usually, like again, we start with the bedroom. And we try to get the path from the, bed, uh, from the bedroom, to, excuse me, we start with the bathroom. Yeah. The path from the bedroom to the bathroom clear. Yeah. and make sure that the bathroom is accessible because that's the most important part, especially in the middle of the night. Oh, and we and, recommend and nightlights. I was just going to say that I, when you described that and I said, what an obvious thing to have light, little lights. Little lights, from almost the bedroom like. bedroom to the bathroom because that's the only place you almost go. Almost like a runway. Yeah. To, to, yeah. to lead you in the direction. And in some pe people, as the dementia progresses, we tell people to put tape showing them the pathway to go in a reflective tape that they can see. Right. Um, 
so yes, night lights are very important in both the bedroom and the bathroom and the hallways so that people can get from point A to point B safely. Yep. Um, other things in the bedroom is similar to your toilet. You want to have, you don't want a water bed. <laughs> but I don't think those are available too much right. anymore. No, they're kind of But gone. soft and cushy beds. Nice that you remember those. <laughs> yeah, I remember those. Yeah. I'm aging myself, right. I know. Right. Um, but you want to make sure your bed height isn't too high or too low because, again, too low or too high can oftentimes miss as you're trying to get into it, reducing into a fall, usually a fractured hip or leg or whatever, and we all know where that goes. And there isn't a kind of a standard height for a bed that all beds are... No. There's no standard heights, so you want to try. And again, there's no standard human beings either. So right. a bed height for me that's comfortable would maybe be different than for you. So right. you want to try to find mitigated between the residents of the home or yep. who's sharing that bed, one yep. that's comfortable for both people, but that is a proper level for them. We always also recommend in a bedroom a strong chair to get up and get out of. Somebody, if you needed to dress in a chair to sit down, put on your socks and stuff, make sure that chair is a good sturdy chair so that you're able to push up and push off safely, right. even if you're going up into a walker. Right, and, and, it, and it, that, as the, as the disease progresses, having that chair there, which wouldn't necessarily be a bedroom item, right, exactly. can, just, it can just be a really it important thing. It just can be a, a very important thing and just an ease of person's uh, yeah. ability to live in their home. And so to, and now just take the remaining, just tell me a little bit about the kind of remaining living space, the li living room, dining room, anything special, um, and, and a little bit about outside. We'll talk about outside. So living room and dining room, again, yeah. is mostly revolve around clutter-free, yeah. scatter-rug-free. No scatter -rug. No scatter-rugs, because those are the number one slip and fall. And I, I'm, I'm personally um, bad about that because I do have them. Um, but the more I'm seeing them and the more I, I say to myself, those are coming up very shortly and not ready to return. Because, right. again, those are the number one slip and falls of people. Um, and you just want to make sure your spaces are clear. You have some good sturdy furniture to sit down on. Yeah. Nothing worse than sitting into a couch and sinking so far in that you can't get up. Right. Which has happened right. to me. And I'm fairly able-bodied, even after surgery. Um, dining room, again, it's the same, same type of thing. Strong chairs. Make sure that there's nothing. Um, your accoutrements for your, your utensils are put mm -hmm. away so that somebody isn't going to be able to access any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Kitchen, same thing. You want to make sure of the, all your utensils are stuff. Walking outside. Outside. Give me a couple minutes about outside. Okay. Outside is you want to make sure there's bright lights to, to lead you up the pathway. Again, especially as it t t we go ahead to winter and it gets darker so much earlier. Lights. And if you're out at the doctor's or at wherever and you need to come home, you want to make sure sometimes motion lights are very good too. We can put them on different motion sensors so that as you pull up to your driveway, the light will kick on for your garage. If you're not able to have a garage that's attached to your home, yeah. the lighting path to your front door or back door or side door turns on so that the light, it's very, very lit for you to, to be able to come into the home. Because I would think here, especially in the, in the fall, winter, spring, where there's a lot of darkness here, that's going to be mo one of the most likely places to Again, fall. Again, that's your you got, second you got You've got surfaces that are, that are not Uneven really, really... necessarily, right. covered in ice, all those kind of things. Right. One of the other things is you want to make sure your pathway is clear. So if you're out, in the, even in the summer, you have garden hoses and you're watering your flowers, make sure you coil it up and put it on the side so that somebody walking on that path is not going to be tripped. Isn't going to get tripped. Exactly. Animals are another thing. We love animals, but we want to make sure that they're not in our footpath as we're walking. Um, that's very outside. difficult. Yeah, I that's know very, it is. It's very, very difficult. very difficult to persuade those, especially because the animals often are such a wonderful thing. They are. They are especially an, a wonderful as, to as have. Especially as you're having these, some exactly. of these issues. Exactly. They are so, wonderful to have. As so that is a mountain of advice. Mm -hmm. I think, what, I, when I remember I would introduce you to these seminars, I'd say, so this is, this is going to be like listening to like an engineer <laughs> talk about your house, because you, you never think of your house mm -hmm. the way you do, kind of room by room and item by approach. item. And so much of it, you know, there are some themes that kind of run through it. But mm -hmm. the most important thing is, and I guess I would really, there are products that the average person just would not be aware of that have grown up as a result of this stuff, yes, right? And you just tend to know them because you, this Lever is the stuff that you're doing. Lever handles are the number one cause. Right. So, you, so you said, okay, so this is an ad for you. So you've said that you and your husband will come in and you'll kind of look at someone's house mm -hmm. for a fee, mm -hmm. right? And then if they decide they want to hire you, fine, but otherwise, fine. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I hope that you found this really helpful. Um, there are a number of things that you can do to make sure that your house stays as good as it can be and you can stay in it as long as you want, right? 
Um, you want to talk to somebody like Carol about what is available to allow you to do that. Carol, thanks a million for Thank coming you on. Much, I hope that the, the, some of the slides get on, get on the yes, show and some kind of something so that they can contact you. Sounds Thank good. you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the next installment of Bridger on Briefs. Thank you.